I don't even have to start off singing to do it. I can just start doing it. Uh, I, I taught myself to I, do that. I, I'm just saying you're going like this. <laughs> and I can eat practically anything. Literally anything. I could, well, I can't eat glass and I certainly can't eat dog shit. That's, um... I met Adam when he was 17. He's just about to turn 21. I can case manage him until he's 21. He moved from care, out of home care, into uh, back to home, to mum and dad's, and now that's fallen down. And he's on the roundabout. He will be bouncing around, rooming house, maybe refuge if there's, there's got to be a space in a refuge. Um, but. You only get a certain amount of time in a refuge, uh, 21 days, I think. In the meantime, he just floats from pillar to post. No, no other family. He's got nowhere to go. And being homeless. Now tell me you don't think this is a runner. I think this might be a runner. These two Yankees were like 20 and 22, maybe. They weren't getting much money, so we'll give them a really cheap deal, really cheap deal, through Vincent Care at the beginning. Then they were gonna pay for the last few weeks themselves, but they've been doing graffiti and they've been smoking dope and stuff, so. Yeah, look at the heater. They, they disassembled the whole aircon heater on the unit. It's all taken apart. They left basically rubbish around, and I don't think they left much else. We get a TV taken at least once a week, easy. Which is why now I just resort to going on Gumtree or eBay and getting TVs like second hand sort of thing, because buying them three, four hundred dollars is not worth it. I don't think it's nice, but at the same time, I think it's a product of our society because these kids, their father's in jail for how many years? They they're not living with their mother. They're basically, you know, they're out. So they're really, they've got nowhere to go. So um, in many ways, our society should be looking after them in some way. So I'm not here to judge them, you know? But I mean, I just think that one, I give them a, they should give me some respect like I gave them, you know? I gave them a room, I've been fair with them, they should be the same back. Even if they can't pay, they've got to get some sort of conditions with me to organise payment slowly. And I'm happy to wait, you know? Yeah. If by tomorrow they're not here, probably have to clean the room up. Yeah, come in, come in, come in. You're welcome to come in tomorrow. Yeah, yeah no, come on, come in, guys. I walked around the corner, I had my sunnies on, and she was sitting out there with another girl, and I took my sunnies off, and when she looked up at me, and I looked at her, I oh, know, we just had that instant it's connection. Inst connection. Instant connection. Oh, only six weeks, but with that said, because we know each other so fucking well now, I, it's unbelievable, I can't not, I have not met a girl, a woman in my life ever, that has been so compatible. She does everything I do. She, I reckon she's a female version of me. Yeah, I should be a boy. No, he's yeah, a girl. Yeah, I should be a male, yeah. I reckon. <laughs> but this, we've got so much in common. We, we, you know, she collects caps. I... On this side of the wall, I lost my brother two years ago. He passed away in a car accident. Yeah, he did, yeah. Um, 
my mum is passing away at this point of time. She's in hospital. She's only got about maybe three weeks to go now. I'll tell you something. Not many blokes would stick around with what, it's what she's going through. Why is my life like this? Why? Come on, baby. <laughs> my family, my mum, everybody's going, man. Like I said before, a lot of blokes wouldn't stick around, but she's fucking getting cold feet and run off on her. Yes. And uh, she thinks her dead brother sent me to her. That's how she thinks. I reckon he did. I reckon he did. And look, what I'd like to know is how many blokes would stick around and help a woman that needs help when they meet her for the first time. Yeah, people who are sort of uh, in family violence, domestic situations where you know, children are removed or you know, wives are removed. People who come out of um, rehabilitation centres like prisoners. Refugees sometimes. We get people that have been stuck on things like Christmas Island. Life is not as simple as everyone thinks it is sometimes. You know, the world's getting very complex. Open the door, Jim. I mean, the guy's been silly. He had a knife of sorts, but he wasn't actually going to go and kill, hit someone with that, I think. He was basically just threatening someone. We're not really trained professionals on that level, and yet I find it challenging that they, the government sort of puts that you know, onus onto a, a private motel like this, given the complicity of these people. Hey Claire, it's Karen from Cobic Stain. How are you going? Good, thank you. Um, I just want to speak to someone in regards to a, a client that you guys booked in with us last night. She left an exposed sy syringe in the room, um, but the cleaners went in there and they found it just shoved under the bed. That's her choice doing that, but you know, take it with you or, or dump it somewhere else. All right, thank you so much, Claire. Okay, bye bye. That's okay. No worries. Bye bye. Oh my God, we had this guy here, number seven. We haven't had, we haven't been able to book the room out. I swear to God, he, his pants, like tracksuits, they had bands, they were like that full of shit. We had to check everything out. The mattress, the bed shitting, everything. He slept in there for three days, in shit. You can't be judgmental because everyone, you know, everyone's got a story. And there's a reason behind everything that they do. We all hit rock bottom somehow. I've wrote poems on the wall to help other people um, realise what life's all about and, you know, you can get back up on your feet. Welcome to my home. The drawings on my wall are dedicated to the same staff in the manager, manager field. It feels always saying, you know, you haven't touched anything today. I actually do a bit of housekeeping here now, so like that's a starter, you know, that's starting somewhere, that I'm getting somewhere. I never thought that I'd end up on the streets or um, doing drugs. Or um, um, the drug, meth, yeah, ice. My drug habit was pretty bad when I first came here. I was um, using a lot, like every day, maybe two or three times a day. Um, now it's probably once every three days, four days, so. I'll probably be here for a good 12 months or more. Like, it's not gonna be overnight that I'm gonna get better. We all had problems and, you know, we've all had a pass and, like I said, I've never seen a motel my whole life like them. We've got a lot of clients who come here who basically are in transit housing and they really can't afford to be going into permanent housing but they can't also afford to be paying motel rates. So we decided to do like a, uh, like a cashback sort of situation. Say someone's doing the bins for you, right, on a, in the morning. That, that five hours we were quoted about a hundred bucks or whatever, they can come off their rent, right? That 50 bucks makes a big difference for someone in a week's scheme because they, they give you their food for the week. Yeah.
You know, number seven. Oh, Phil let him back here. Yeah. I told him he had to pay, but he hasn't paid yet. Hey, John. I'm going to stand back here. Hey, John. Yeah. Have you got money for me, mate? Um, yeah. Um, um, yeah. Could, um, could, could I give you 50 now and, um, and the rest in the morning or not? No, you've got to pay it all today, mate. It's yeah. got to be paid all at once. All right, thanks for that, Dale. I've all right. We've got the room again tonight, thank you. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. No worries, John. OK, mate. Yeah. Bye. Thank you. No worries. Oh, fuck. Number seven, I, I don't know why he's let him back. That room's going to have to be fumigated for a week. Hey, girls. Can we come in? No. Hey. I'm getting dressed up. No. I'm, well, I'm in here. It's not your room. It's not your room. Go in the bathroom. Shut the door. She always comes in here. She's attached to Kate. She's attached to me, yeah, we got pretty close. She'll come in, knock on my door any time of night, you know, like it could be two o'clock in the morning, what are you doing? And, you know, like, she's good company. She's pretty switched on to a lot of things. Yeah. She's had a tough life, for us, I suppose, like all of us. Room 21, as you walk in the door, the whole floor is just covered in hair. Short hair? Is it short, short hair? Or? Yeah. Sorry, darling. Um, I, look, last night was one of those nights where I, after I finished it at 11, 12, um, knocked off and like, went to sleep. I, I, I was, and I was on call, I had calls all night, man. Just, I mean, just, just random stuff, bro. And, um, yeah, I'm knackered. <laughs> Yeah, very. She wants you to hop out. Come on. Hey, right, that, that is enough now. That's enough now. That's enough. Call me a name like that again. There's going to be a problem. Don't even go there. Yeah, don't even go there. She just called me an effing slut. That's the abuse you cop at this joint, mate. Hey, Spud, you right? I swear to God, if that was a male that said that, I would have gone right off. She'll come to me in half an hour and apologise, but cannot shut my mouth with males if males are going mad at me. I can't shut my mouth. I know what it is, but I can't get into that. It's to do with my past, you know? I just don't think you call anyone names like that. I know they're just words, but I've never called anyone a name like that in my life. I wouldn't. You see, that's Swiss Cafe. Half was motel, and the other half was Swiss Cafe. Now it's going to be all motel. The whole sign will be a motel. It's having a perv in case any hot a fireman, but there aren't. Waste of time that was. <laughs> We're not really killing it. We're not really making money in a big way. Um, but that wasn't my main concern. It was more about at least making it um, um, balance out. At the moment we are under, um, I know that the ATO <laughs> is on my case. <laughs> Look, people need accommodation, um, and this is one avenue they have at the moment. I'm not saying I didn't make the rules, I'm not saying this is the, the best avenue for them, but they've got to have somewhere to sleep and a roof over their head, right? I've never seen Melbourne more disgusting in all my life, and I've lived here for a while. So you walk around streets in the city and there's people walk, sleeping there under cardboard boxes, begging for money in broad daylight in the first world country. I think it's shocking. Late July we had the um, shooting incident here. Um, Booking.com um, expressed their concerns about the place um, and they put us on a 12 month um, a suspension. Yeah, reviews, look, reviews. Um, a client coming in on an on a, uh, international booking uh, program, I can expect some negative reviews occasionally because they'll come in to, and, and, and maybe come to contact with people they normally wouldn't be mixing with in a motel. You, you mixing the two clients together doesn't work sometimes. I mean, often it doesn't work. Um, People are very narrow-minded, they're very opinionated, they're very, um, 
Uh, they're inside a square thing, you know, the little white picket fence houses in the suburbs that nothing happens, but it does happen, they just don't see it. So when they come across with people who take drugs or prostitutes or some of the work, you know, these are, these are things happening around them all the time. And for them, they, it's a, a reality check that they often don't like to see. Kylie left a review for Australian Rome. Right? So this is Kylie. It says, oh my God, OMG. I, I recommend not staying here. Um, I wouldn't get them a one-star rating, but I do have to select at least one to be able to comment, which is why I give them one. People staying here stay at their own risk, right? A negative one again, I wouldn't recommend this place as it's, it wasn't clean enough for him, right? My room was not of standard. Terrible place. Police were there. Other residents were used drugs. Absolute nose dive. We one star that didn't write review. Drunks, druggies and junkie people. Drugs were used on the premises. Cops were there at one in the morning. Great service. It is the best on Sydney Road. Now that surprised me. Yep. <laughs> After what we just read before, right? So basically, we don't, we're taking over the whole sign. So we're going to basically have one big sign that says motel only, parking at rear. And it's, this side is this side actually one that's really faded, facing, facing north. Well, yeah, that's, that's, what the, that's what the cafe was like before, at the front there. See, the, see how the garden was actually quite low and, and neat. I go on um, Job Provider and I go on Google or I've got my certificate one, two, three in hospitality. Um, I, I like to do um, more in social work with, you know, like helping children and youth working. I, I go on Facebook um, and I, I go on um, Google and I type their name in and, you know, like I can see recent photos of them. Um, at one stage, my son, my oldest son, was reading the messages, and I think he stopped reading them now. And um, it's really hard, you know, like for for a mother to, yeah, it's really yeah, really hard. That's uh, I don't even know. I can't even comprehend on facing them and looking in their eyes and seeing their sadness in their eyes. You know, like I, I don't know. I would love to meet them and I only recently found out my oldest son got married and after my marriage failed, my children wanted to stay with their dad. After that period, I hit the drug scene and lived on the streets. I was still ashamed to confront my children. Every day I look at these photos, oh my God, their father has done a wonderful job and he should be proud, I know I am. I know it's a it's right, if you are reading this, my children, please let me come see you, please. But I never um, heard anything.